Stimulating your energy by just standing still. That's what we're going to be talking about in this episode of Chi Life. We're also going to be talking about why this might not be the best kind of practice for you to start with. Why it might actually be a better idea to start with some moving practices and then move on to this kind of standing practice. Okay, so if you've done a little bit of Qigong, you've probably done some of this kind of practice or you've probably at least seen it. It's one of the most famous uh, types of Qigong practice. And where we, you stand still, you just stand still as a way to stimulate the energy within your body. And um, there's, uh, th there's one type of this practice which is super, super famous. Um, where, where people stand with their arms like this, it gets different names. Um, sometimes people call it embracing the tree and things like that. And it, that particular exercise is so famous and widespread that some people assume that that is the practice. In fact, there's many different postures that are used for this kind of practice. They're called Zhang Zhuan, or um, roughly translated as standing post. Um, I will make a little distinction there because sometimes people get the wrong idea about what it means to stand post and they think to stand like a post means to stand still like a post because a post is still. This actually comes from a practice of standing on top of posts. So posts in the ground and then standing on top of them. There's, there's, a, there's a subtle difference that particularly if you get deep into the practice you'll understand that it's, it's best to have that different concept in your mind. But basically we, we stand in, in a variety of still postures and different postures stimulate our energy in different ways. Um, I've even heard some practitioners refer to this um, and they've said that all of the moving Qigong are really just warm-ups and you're not actually doing Qigong until you're, you're doing the Zhang Zhuan or the still standing practices. Now that is clearly really an overstatement because all of the different moving Qigong practices work with your energy. They're very effective, well when done well, they're very effective in working with your energy, developing skill with your energy. But these, these still practices really stimulate your energy in a way far stronger than really than any of the other practices. I'm trying to think. Oh no, mate, there are some other practices that stimulate it in a strong way, a different way. But it's, it, you, it really stimulates the energy in a very strong way and it, and it can be very surprising to people who haven't done this kind of practice before just how stimulating it can be just to stand still. I'm going to add some provisos to this though because for an, a complete beginner or someone who hasn't done a lot of Qigong practice, when they go into these still standing practices, um, the, they're quite subtle and there's a couple of things. Often you run the risk of completely missing the point because you haven't developed enough awareness of your energy to tune into to it and know what's going on and so you can feel very much like I'm just standing here what's going on and and and, and not get the point whereas if you've developed some awareness of energy through other you know whatever kind of moving exercise it might be it then becomes easier to transition to a still practice and you've already connected your mind to the movement of the energy and so then in the still practice you can continue to follow that energy and it becomes much richer you can get the point of it and you can really feel what's happening inside you which means of course you're more likely to stick with it there are some other reasons why for most people I don't get them doing much, I'll sometimes get them doing a little bit, but not much of these still standing practices to begin with. And this is because often the moving practices are a really good preparation uh, for the standing practices. Because when we stand, one of the things that we get from some of these standing practices 
is literally to become centered and balanced. You know, sometimes we talk about someone being centered as a very metaphorical thing. But literally we want to be centered within the space of our body. In terms of the tensions of our body, we want, don't want too much tension on the front, too little on the back, and so on. When we become centered, physically, the energy in our, our body, the activity becomes centered. It allows the energy to flow more easily. Now, if you have some significant imbalances, some, some places where things are, have, are significantly tightened, and you just straight away go and just try and stand in a posture, they can block things up so much that the energy really doesn't flow very much and you're not going to get much benefit from the practice. On the other hand, when we move, the nature of moving in different ways is that little by little we can uh, work away at those tensions and open them up so that the energy starts to flow and so that there's a way through. Now once the energy starts to flow, it then becomes easier to maintain it in that posture. It's less likely to close up. Because one of the big things is that as we stand in different postures, particularly as we do this for a long time, because to get the full benefit it really does come from prolonged standing, any of our imbalances come to the surface, they become more obvious to us. So there's different places where there are tension, because we're just standing there not allowing ourselves to move, those tensions become stronger and we become aware of them and in becoming aware of them it helps us to release them both at a conscious and an unconscious level. Consciously we can make adjustments, but also our body goes, that's uncomfortable, and unconsciously it learns how to make small adjustments to release them as well. When we haven't even made a start on opening those blockages up, we stand there and it's just already blocked. It's very hard to get the energy running through. If we if on the other hand we've opened them so the energy, it might not be completely gone, but we've opened them so the energy is at least flowing through, then as we stand, that energy can help to release, 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 and we're getting the benefit, and it doesn't feel like we're just kind of running up against something that isn't yielding. We get that step-by-step -step, um, benefit. And so that's one reason why it's useful often to start with moving practices, get the energy flowing, and then we maintain that movement and flow in the standing practice. Not exactly the same thing, but related to this, um, there was someone just asking a question or uh, making some comments um, in the Qigong Everyday Facebook group, which if you haven't checked it out, I highly recommend you do. Um, it's a great group. People interacting, asking questions, sharing insights. There's lots of people from lots of different backgrounds in there, not just Long White Cloud Qigong. There's um, teachers and students of all different styles. Um, sharing their experience of doing Qigong every day, which I think is really awesome. The group's going really well. So, um, highly recommend you check that out. Anyway, this person uh, was making some comments or questions about, um, and, and it sounds like this person has, has practiced Qigong for quite some time and has, has some experience. And they're saying that lately, whenever they do long standing sessions, they're having a hard time um, clearing the thoughts from their mind. They find that thoughts just keep arising. Our thoughts are a kind of energy and it's very very common, particularly in our modern life, for our energy to come to our head, particularly in the form of thoughts, and sometimes become blocked there. And it's because in today's world so much of our activity is mental activity. Very few of us have physical jobs now where we have to you know primarily use our body to lift and move and dig and you know whatever it is most of us involve sitting and reading and thinking and talking and the energy naturally comes up into our head that can become stuck here now part of uh, the practice whether it's a, just a pure like a sitting meditation or a, a standing qigong practice is to develop discipline and ability to let that energy in the form of thoughts release and go so that we become more skilled at that. 
but it can be very beneficial and very useful to use movement as a tool to do this as well because movement stimulates energy in a different way and we can use practices to actually move energy through our head so that and then discharge the energy and so as that energy comes out our tendency to have our mind full of thoughts goes as well we release that so our mind can become more comfortable and clear so one uh, example of this is and there's a number of different physical practices there are mental disciplines that we can use but there are a number of different physical practices that we can use as well one place where you'll find some really good ones for this is towards the end of waking the chi which is a, a series of exercises you can find that on the long white cloud qigong website and and it does all sorts of uh, wonderful things for your kidneys for your back all this sort of thing but towards the end what we're doing is we're using physical movement of course within the series and we bring we bring the energy up we bring it up to the head we bring it out we bring it all the way up and then we we discharge and descend the energy back down so there's a few movements involved in that I'm not going to demonstrate them all properly I suggest you look you find the there's a video you can just go and look at on the website if you want to actually do it properly but we're bringing the energy up and down we cycle it further through the body we concentrate the energy in the chest we bring it up into the head we bring it all the way up and then we we drop it down and by bringing the energy up and through and dropping it down we clear those energy blockages in our head so using the movement first we help to again to clear some of those major blockages in the same way that we might clear some physical blockages or at least open them part way and then with them clear whether it be from the body whether it be from the mind we're in a better position to gain the true benefit from our standing practice so yeah I hope that was interesting to you hope maybe give you some uh, food for thought some things to think about um, in your qigong practice maybe an appreciation of um, you know in, in qigong there's there's harmonies and we find harmonies harmonies and opposites so we find movement within stillness and we find stillness within movement sometimes the movement is very helpful to create the stillness that then allows us to have the movement cycling from yin to yang anyway uh, glad to have you along on this episode if you've enjoyed it um, please like comment subscribe share all those good things uh, and as usual I look forward to having you on the next one